Hello, my name is Allie Dodson, and today I'll be discussing the first chapter of Morgan Batalka's book. It is titled Handmade Culture, Raku Potters, Patrons, and Tea Practitioners in Japan. Morgan Patelka, um, in his introduction of his book, established that he was the son of a professional potter, identified as his father, and that his mother was a historian. He later became a historian after receiving his PhD in East Asian Studies from Princeton University and became a professor himself at the University of North Carolina. He also serves as the department chair of Asian Studies and he specializes in medieval and pre-modern Japan. That includes the life of the samurai, tea culture, ceramics, cities, and material culture. The main argument um, was explicitly stated by the author, and it is as quoted below. It says, I examined documentary evidence, extant ceramics, and archaeological evidence to argue that this tale is a product of political and economical struggles among competing tea schools more than a century later. I also want to note the picture in this slide, as it is um, a picture of the type of ceramic that's in question during the first chapter of Morgan Patelka's book. So, in delivering his argument, Morgan Patelka examined uh, several different primary sources. He also quoted several of them as well in this chapter, but he mainly um, discussed the material culture and discursive elements, um, which he found from archaeological evidence as well as heirloom ceramics, tea diaries, letters, prints, and other primary sources. He then formulated his argument in a design where he first um, established what Raku ware is. He also established the um, controversy of the origin, and then he delineated the arguments that surrounded this controversy. So before I even acknowledge this slide, I would like to apologize for any future mispronunciations of terms from this slide onwards. That said, let's get started with the key terminology. Discursive elements uh, was uh, part of the author's argument, and he also coined it as a construction, a process never completed, and is always in process. Chojiro is the name uh, in controversy um, that the author argued about the existence of. Um, Chojiro is a potter that was tied to Sino Raku during his career. Namburuku is a text and record of Sino Raku's teachings that was written by one of his disciples, who was identified as Nambo Soki from Nansuji Temple in Sakai. The text was also discovered around Sino Raku's death. Sido ceramics and kilns are a type of black ceramics in Japan, and they were the only other black ceramic ware outside of Raku ware, which was used in text to describe the black tea bowls. One of them is um, pictured in this slide as well. Um, new ware is a term that appeared in uh, primary sources. It coins the emergence and introduction of black tea bowls. Um, which um, is arguably Raku wear, but also not necessarily Raku wear, if that makes sense, but that we'll also discuss that later on. And then there's Oguro, which is a black tea bowl that is attributed to Chojiro. It is known to be hand-built and carved into the shape it holds. That is pictured also later on in this presentation. All right. So the first aspect of the argument that the author presents is the story or myth of Cho Jiro and how Raku ceramics were created. Um, Morgan Patelka establishes um, information about the popular myth, which references Cho Jiro as a ceramic tile maker who worked on Hideyoshi's Jirakurai Palace in Kyoto when Raku, who taught and worked for Hideyoshi, discovered Cho Jiro. Basically, the two supposedly met during the timestamp of construction of the Jirakurai Palace. Raikyu, impressed with 
Jiro is rumored to have hired Tojiro to create the famous Raikou ceramics of blackware. The creations are said to be highly influenced by Raikou as he suggested matte black and matte red tea bowls, also prevalent in Raikou wear. The story is not recorded in any historical record, therefore not supported by evidence as the author finds. It also just so happens to be a popular myth. However, Tohiro did exist through primary sources and was identified by a line-shaped roof tile. There is no other evidence that is related to the tile maker of Raikou, nor is there any relation to Raikou wear. Even in Raikou's documentations throughout his life, there was no mentions of meeting Tohiro, except the connection of Tohiro ceramics as in a water jar, an incense container, and not the tea bowls. The author proves his point that um, by use, quoting and using uh, Namboruko, uh, the text that was previously mentioned, he quotes it as, as like a record of minutes of these tea meetings that references the uh, water jar and incense container. However, he had several other primary sources that said otherwise. The second main aspect of the argument that the author provides is that new wear is a term as well as black tea bowl and Raikou shaped bowls uh, that describe the Raikou ceramics in primary texts. He even quoted several of them and provided uh, pictorial evidence. On such text, Namboruku was analyzed. It was in this text that mentioned uh, Chojira ceramics such as the water jar and incense holder. In the past, scholars speculated Chojiro to black ceramics if the ceramic was not labeled Sito explicitly. The only other possible connection to blackware. Because the tile maker's career is unknown and speculated, there are many preserved black tea bowls that claim creation by Chojiro. Many tea scholars believe many of them to be probable fakes. One such table is the Oguro, which was analyzed in the text. Oguro is one of the many preserved tables that have a connection to the technological wave that took place in the kilns in Japan. Many Japanese kilns adopted methods for mass production versus a single potter and hill hand building techniques. The author then used several sources and um, documentation of these kilns. Uh, to delineate whether or not these new wear was explicitly Tohiro or if it was just a technological wave. Okay, so on this slide, I provided a little excerpt of the level of detail that the author put into his argument. He provided an analysis of Ogoro, which was previously mentioned in the um, key terms. And he also uses his analysis to prove um, another point of his argument. So I will briefly read um, part of his analysis. It says, the bowl is 8.5 centimeters in height and 11.5 centimeters in width at the rim. The balls are straight without being symmetrical and the lip of the mouth is roughly flat though marked by numerous small breaks. The glaze is matte black broken by small pockmarks and occasional larger indentations including one that may have been caused when the potter removed the bowl from the kiln with iron tongs. The bowl's hilt is gently rounded merging seamlessly with the base. The foot has four spur marks remnants of small clay stilts or pads that were used to keep the glaze on the tea bowl from sticking to the kiln shelf. So, from providing this analysis, he then compared the Ogoro with a few of the other um, probable fakes um, that other scholars have noticed that claim um, this to be uh, created by Chojiro. So, despite having many probable fakes of Chojiro um, ancestry or origin, I guess I should say, uh, the late 20th century marked the excavations of Kyoto, which provided more findings that conflicted with prior findings about Raku wear. 
um, more black tea bowls were unearthed and were created to look like the supposedly Chojiro styled tea bowls. Each mimicked Chojiro style with different methods and supported the idea of additional kilns that created black ware. That is very important to note. The author argues that the newer findings suggest that Raku ceramics were not created by the career of Chojiro, but perhaps the shift in ceramic trends that several kilns played a role. The author also argued that evidence shows that the origins of Raku ware were not based off of the relationship between Raku and Chohiro, but may be the result of changing consumer demand. Further on the investigation on the Raku methods revealed that the coloring and firing technique uh, come from China and Japan. An example is the three coloring technique found to have originated in Xingzhou, China. Patelka also looked at Chinese documentations of Chinese crafts workers in Japan that documented uh, Chinese tile workers living in Japan. Several connections between Chohiro and the Chinese crafts workers were found, pointing out that the creation of Raku ceramics may not be as the myth claims. Furthermore, being a result of, as Patelka is quoted, the juxtaposition of a diverse urban market and a thriving international ceramics trade in which products and people from across Asia were influencing to the tastes of Kyoto tea pr practitioners. So lastly, in review um, and critique of this chapter, the argument that Patelka de detailed is convincing through the several sources and interconnections that were found from primary sources. Personally, I discovered the same myth and author while researching about Sindo Raikyu. The myth is published everywhere, even under the namesake of the three T schools attributed to Sindo Raikyu. So the controversy is difficult to challenge. It is noteworthy that this chapter is one out of several that contain different arguments about the Raku topic. What I'm trying to say is that it was difficult to discern the author's true purpose and biggest argument, knowing that Patelka displayed several and published them in the same book. From the vast selection and analysis of materials, I wouldn't change a thing. The author is a historian and notably uh, used several primary sources. I personally disliked how the author made bold claims about the legitimacy and interpretations and assumptions and etc. of prior scholars uh, without specifying the reason behind their thoughts. It took several attempts at reading the various aspects of the argument to understand what the author was arguing about. One positive is that the author acknowledged the controversy of Raku and the potential displacement from the truth that the author's findings may be because of their foreign or Western um, influence. <sighs> so um, this is my bibliography. This first slide mainly consists of the pictures that I've used in my slides. And this is the last half of my bibliography, also pictures and a little bit more information on Morgan Patelka. <laughs>